In the mid-80s, the investors and traders on Wall Street began rapidly adopting computers to execute more efficient trades and create more complex financial models that had the potential to reap more profit. And almost overnight, every investing firm on Wall Street had PCs on its desk. But in all the mass hysteria surrounding the near-magical benefits that computers brought to Wall Street was a dark day. On October the 19th, 1987, the stock market inexplicably crashed in what was one of the largest stock market crashes in Wall Street's history, and supposedly computers were to blame for it. This is the story of how computers caused the biggest one-day percentage drop in US stock market history and cost the global economy more than a trillion dollars. By 1987, the US stock market had been on a bull run that spanned five years. In plain English, this meant that the stock market had been experiencing unprecedented growth for five years straight. Before the historic crash, there had been some warning signs. By 1987, US economic growth had begun to slow down while inflation was steadily increasing. The strong US dollar was putting a lot of pressure on US exports. These factors caused the diverging of the stock market from the US economy. While the US economy wasn't particularly doing great, the US stock market was experiencing unprecedented levels of growth. Simply put, the values of companies on the US stock market were too high when compared to the health of the US economy as a whole. The market was due for correction, and it was going to be a big one. Despite the concerning indications that the US stock market was due a large correction, investors and traders largely remained confident in the US stock market due to an innovation called portfolio insurance. If money is evil, then that building is hell. This is the most obnoxious group of money-hungry, low-IQ, high-energy jackrabbit. Portfolio insurance involved large institutional investors partially hedging their stock portfolios by taking short positions in S&P 500 futures. This in theory would mean that if the stock price decreased, losses would be offset by the short position on the futures contracts which would be triggered when the price of the underlying stock reached a certain low point, thereby offsetting the loss in value of the stocks that were being held in the investor's portfolio. In theory, this strategy guaranteed minimal losses, if at all any. But in practice, it created a massive cascading event that saw the largest stock market drop in US history. Days before the catastrophic market decline, there had been a few warning signs. Stock market indexes like the S&P 500 were down 10%, meaning the market was experiencing a lot of selling pressure. But for the most part, the portfolio insurance hedging strategy was able to withstand the selling pressure it kept the markets relatively stable. This was until the market opened on Monday, the 19th of October, 1987. By this point in time, most of the investors who used the portfolio insurance hedging strategy had computer programs that executed it on their behalf automatically. So the computer would constantly analyze stock prices and make the necessary moves to protect the portfolio. If the stock went up, it would take out more short positions on futures contracts to hedge against any price drop. And if the price went down, it would cash in on those short positions to reduce the losses made from the stock decline. But there was a major flaw in this strategy. This strategy only worked in a market that is infinitely growing, with slight ups and downs in stock prices but an overall trend of growth. What would happen if the market suddenly just kept going down? This, to most investors in 1987, was inconceivable. But on the Monday of the 19th of October 1987, the inconceivable materialized. Following the trend of selling pressure that had been going on in the previous few days, when the market opened on October the 19th, there was a higher number of sell orders than usual. So as the stock prices fell in accordance with the higher levels of selling in the market, the computers cashed in on more and more short positions, traders began selling their stocks in order to cover their short positions, further pushing down the price of the stock, which in turn made the computers cash in on more short positions on futures contracts, 
with this process continually repeating with catastrophic devastation. On the day, absolutely no one had a clue on what was happening. The investors were brave enough to buy in this immense declining period, soon regretted their decisions as stock prices continued to tumble. The New York Stock Exchange ended up having to halt trading of certain stocks to put a stop to the decline and panic in the markets. In the aftermath of the crash, it was found that the S&P 500 and Dow Jones Industrial Average both shed in excess of 20% of their value, one of the largest losses of value in a single day of trading the US markets have ever seen. The crash of the US stock market caused a cascading event that caused other stock markets all over the world to crash. The estimated cost of the crash globally was over a trillion dollars. Computerized training programs were blamed for the crash. But were computers really to blame? Computer programs are only as smart as their creators. These trading algorithms based on portfolio insurance were programmed by valuable human beings and were trusted by people who didn't understand their limitations. Giving these programs full trust without human oversight was bound to end catastrophically. And it seems Wall Street never fully learned its lesson, as evidenced by the similar flash crash of May 6, 2010. But that's a story for another day. Thank you for watching.